we saw that the message of Fatima is of its very nature Catholic. Nothing more, nothing less. It's the expression of the Catholic faith for this 20th century. But, don't we all know lots of people who believe in the messages of Fatima, who try and put them into practice, who pray the rosary, people who try and obey what Our Lady Fatima asked, but who do not understand the crisis in the church, who do not understand the importance of tradition in the church, who do not understand the errors and the crisis in the church, who do not understand modernism, the lots of conservatives who believe in Our Lady Fatima. But if the message of Fatima is really the answer for the church at this point in time, how could this be so? How could those who believe in Fatima be so confused, be so led astray? How could, be there, how could there be so many people who follow the conciliar church who yet still say they want to do what Our Lady of Fatima asked for? Is really the message of Our Lady of Fatima what is crucially important for us to carry on our fight for the Catholic faith? Is it not perhaps compatible with the deviations, with the spirit of the conciliar church and of Vatican II after all? Can there be perhaps communions of reparation the first Saturdays done in the structure of the new Mass? Does this devotion then help us? in the terrible crisis of faith that we are living through? Does this revelation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary have finally nothing specific to say to us who are fighting for tradition? Who associate ourselves, who, who are members of the Society of St. Pius X? And if so, then it would appear that the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary doesn't have anything particular to do with the overcoming of the terrible era of modernism. As, for example, the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus was so crucially important in overcoming the Jansenism and the Gallicanism of the 17th century. Of course, it does. Of course, Fatima does give us the answer. Fatima is the refutation for all of the errors of modernism and the modern conciliar church. It is the inspiration, it is the assurance that in fighting for tradition, for the Mass, we are fighting under the banner of Our Lady of Fatima and we alone are truly fighting under the banner of Our Lady of Fatima, which is the same banner as the Mass. Because Fatima is the answer to naturalism, to rationalism, to liberalism, to laicism, to indifferentism, to modernism. The requests of Our Lady of Fatima are the answer to the whole crisis in the church. Our Lady of Fatima is opposed to the deviations of the conciliar church just as Catholicism is opposed to Protestantism. We need to 
understand. If our devotion to Our Lady Fatima is to be theological and profound, and if we understand exactly why we must march under the banner of Our Lady Fatima for the traditional faith and against all the modern changes. The two go together, the two go hand in hand, the two are inseparable because Fatima is the answer to every one of these errors. Take, for example, the era of naturalism. What is the era of naturalism? It's the era which exalts human nature to such a way as to say that we can live a moral life, a good life, without having any special need of divine grace or revelation, that, that we can fulfill our spiritual aspirations just with ourselves, by our own efforts, without any special intervention by God. Of course, totally opposed to Fatima, which is a special intervention of God. Totally opposed because it denies that supernatural order which we see apparent at Fatima. Nothing could be more opposed. We see, particularly in that opposition to sin and the demand for reparation, the demand for a supernatural order. Remember that last heart rending appeal which our lady made the last thing she said to the children, men must amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins. Do not offend God anymore. He's already too greatly offended. That's the answer to naturalism which disregards sin, thinks that we can just follow our own natural tendency to do good, to serve God. But you might say, look, we know that there are people who believe that, but I mean not in the modern church, not in those who would like to follow Our Lady Fatima. That radical naturalism, that's a Freemasonic ideal, that's the idea of, of, brother, of that fraternity which englobes all men without any exception. It's true. But if there are few Catholics who really openly deny the very existence of the supernatural order, which is total naturalism. There are very many, there are very many who are practically naturalist in their attitudes and in their way of living. They act as if, as if there were no real supernatural order or as if it weren't that important as if it didn't really matter. Practically they deny the preeminence of the supernatural, without which we cannot please God, without which our natural aspirations and our feelings are useless. Because you see they reduce religion to a feeling that we have inside us, to that experience of religious sensitivity, which all men can have, some more than others, perhaps Catholics better than others, but I mean to say there are lots of different ways of having it. They confuse the natural and the supernatural. That is very common these days, very frequent indeed, and it's to that that the Immaculate Heart, the version of the Immaculate Heart is an answer. Because they say, well, the devotion to the Immaculate Heart is, is fine, but it's but a better option, better way to do it, because it helps us to have a good uh, uh, religious experience. No. Fatima says the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary is not just a better option, it's the only way to please and to obey God. 
We see that at the beginning of the great secret with that terrible vision of hell. The only way to avoid so many sinners falling into hell is devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It's not as if there's an alternative. It's not as if it's just one particular way that we can do it. It's the answer. It's the answer. The answer is reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, without which there can be no s true spiritual life, no spirit of prayer. The answer is consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, alone. It's alone the way to heaven. The demand of Our Lady's request for reparation is exactly the same. It's the only thing, because it's the only thing which is supernatural. It's the only way. It's the refutation of the naturalistic spirit of the modern world, which no longer appreciates the gravity of sin, because there's no supernatural anymore, or practically not that important. Sin is not such a big deal. We just have to be good in ourselves. Terrible, terrible error. For it destroys true religion. It destroys the practice of devotion to the Immaculate Heart because it would have no more meaning. No. If Our Lady asks us to make reparation, to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart, it's because we are sinners, the world is full of sinners, and it's a supernatural reparation, the one which God Himself has asked for, and that alone, which can help us. And there we find the perfect alignment between tradition and Fatima, because tradition tells us exactly the same thing, that there is no choice, there is no alternative. We do it the way God asks it, or we don't do it at all, because everything else is useless. Valueless. The only devotion, religious practices which are acceptable in God's sight are the ones that God has revealed and asked for. That's why, that's why it's a contradiction in the terms to pretend to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart by receiving Holy Communion at the New Mass. Contradiction? Yes, but you might say it's still a communion, but it's a contradiction. Why? Why? Because of the very nature of the New Mass. It's a meal with a president. It's not to be defined as a sacrifice, or if it is a sacrifice, it's but a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which is not a true sacrifice, that is to say, a propitiation for sins, an expiation. That concept, which underlies the new mass, is thoroughly naturalistic. That's why it perverts the true sense of religion. True sense by which we receive the supernatural graces that God has to give us. It's a conception, the new mass, the theology behind it, the whole way it is done is a conception radically opposed to reparation, in which there is no place for repara reparation because it's not a sacrifice of expiation for sins. It's nowhere said, it's not defined as such as the traditional Mass is so explicitly, that's what it is. And most importantly, that's what it is, because it's a renewal of Calvary, which is an expiatory sacrifice. The new Mass and reparation are opposed. That's why it doesn't make sense to receive a Holy Communion in reparation at the new Mass. 
whereas it's of the very nature of the traditional Mass for a communion received to be a reparation, as Our Lady Fatima asked, a true reparation. Because if the Mass is of its nature a reparation and the greatest, the most perfect participation in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is to receive our Lord in Holy Communion, well clearly then every one of our Holy Communions will be a communion of reparation. The most important thing which it is to make up for our sins. And if we should have the greatness of heart to offer it for the sins of the entire world. You see then that it's the traditional Mass alone which can satisfy the requests of Our Lady of Fatima for reparation and particularly for the devotion of the five first Saturdays. Of course that's why this devotion has disappeared in the conciliar church because it's, it's nonsense when you put it into their frame of thinking, into their attitude. It, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. In fact, every one of the Holy Communions, every Mass, that we assist that. By its very nature, even if we don't do anything special to offer it up, is a reparation at the same time to the sacred and immaculate hearts of Mary, sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, to the sacred heart of Jesus because it's our Lord who is offered up body, blood, soul and divinity to the Immaculate Heart of Mary because the Immaculate Heart is inseparable from the Sacred Heart and where our Lord is offered up, Mary is there too, Our Lady is present and her sorrowful heart is appeased. How much more if we should offer up our Masses, offer up our Communions for that intention how truly will we fulfill the requests of Our Lady of Fatima? Our Lady of Fatima must then be our inspiration, that profoundly supernatural inspiration which gives us the conviction and the desire to suffer persecution and whatever difficulties there might be offer reparation. Give me no reparation. Which is not without some difficulty. Our Lady of Fatima is the refutation of any relativism in the practice of religion as if any religion, religious practice or feeling might do. No. No. Our Lord wants reparation. The Blessed Mother wants reparation. Not just a religious experience, not just a feeling, but reparation. That supernatural offering which God alone can really accomplish, which is alone through and by the Mass. Our Lady of Fatima is a banner for tradition just alongside with the Mass and the two are inseparable, two banners under which we fight equally and together at the same time. The message of Our Lady of Fatima answer to the naturalism of the modern world. Our Lady of Fatima answer to rationalism also. What's rationalism? Rationalism is when we say that human reason is independent with respect to the faith. It can act independently from the faith. It's self-sufficient and sovereign in its own domain. It's not subject to any outside domination. God cannot tell us something which we have to adhere to with our mind. We can just know what we can know and that's as far as it goes. It's it's the, the modern rationalism which means that the 
modern world refuses to believe in miracles and it's like a preconceived uh, idea that miracles cannot exist for the simple reason that we cannot understand them. Because why? Human reason is the rule for all knowledge. There's nothing above human reason. Of course it's totally illogical, but yet it's the way men think. And that's why they are so unwilling to believe in any miracles. The consequence of that is the distinction, a radical separation between things which belong to reality and things which are of the faith. They say that the things which belong to reality are accessible to human mind, to our reasoning, but that things which are of the faith have got to, nothing whatsoever to do with our reason. Two different domains. So that we can distinguish between, I'm sure you, you heard very, very often this, this, this terrible distinction which is made between the Christ of history, which we know by our reason, and the Christ of the faith. They don't have anything much to do with one another because the Christ of the faith is but uh, how we feel about Christ. That modern rationalistic spirit, how radically opposed it is Fatima. To Fatima, in which we find the miracles unceasingly. Miracles of the moral order, the sanctity of the children, miracles of the physical order, the, 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 the visions which the children saw, of course, the little cloud which the people saw, the odors, the fragrances, but especially that one great miracle, the miracle of the sun, which was promised and seen by so many people, which is an irrefutable proof that nobody in their sound mind could ever refuse. But yet many out of their sane mind, insane, have refused. That is the answer to rationalism. It's a proof which cannot be refused. Answer against such a fact, there can be no argument, but yet the rationalists refuse it. A proof which is foreseen, which is forecast, which is known in advance, which is apparent visibly externally to so many people. A proof which was without a doubt genuine. A proof which because it was public to so many people was a proof not just for those three children but for the entire church. Of course we have the miraculous Holy Communion also rather for the children. But for the whole church we have also those great prophecies which are now at least partially revealed. There only, there only remains one more, two more, to come. The consecration of Russia, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. But if these miracles are a refutation of modern rationalism, how much more the presentation of the doctrines of the faith at Fatima. Because if rationalists deny anything supernatural, anything above our human reason, there are many so-called practicing Catholics who are, who are tainted by the rationalistic spirit, who try and explain things away, and who don't like there to be something which goes beyond them. The rationalistic spirit which produces a diminution of the faith, because everything is explained away in a symbolic manner. Is that what Fatima does? <gasps> No, exactly the contrary. Fatima presents us with the mysteries and with that great depth of mystery which goes infinitely beyond us from that terrible mystery of hell, the mystery of judgment and of sin to the mystery of heaven, the mystery of the Blessed Sacrament, the mystery 
of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and her universal mediation of graces. All of these mysteries are beyond human compre comprehension and the truth are taught to simply adore what they cannot understand. There is the spirit of the faith which Fatima introduces into our souls which Our Lady wants to give us by this message of Fatima spirit of profound faith which is the spirit of the church which is the answer to the modern disbelieving spirit that modern rationalistic spirit which has produced and continues to produce that radical and totally apostasy from the Catholic faith which is the whole point of the third secret which is what the third secret is speaking about Our Lady of Fatima Our Lady of Fatima then makes an absolute demand an absolute demand upon us to live that spirit of the faith which is the, the spirit of tradition the spirit of the mysteries not the spirit of explaining away not the spirit of watering down so as to not to talk about the mysteries that might separate us from our separated brethren no Fatima makes absolute demands upon us which we cannot understand it requires of us the humility to subject our minds our intelligences our wills to what God tells us to simply adore that's what Our Lady said to the children that's what she taught them she taught them to say my God I believe I adore I hope I love thee act of faith produces an act of hope produces an act of charity there's the spirit of the faith it's so simple that these little children are totally capable of it and I ask pardon for those who don't for those who do not believe and do not adore and do not hope and do not love it's the same thing that the children cried out spontaneously at the end of the at the end of the first apparition they were lost in God and they cried out spontaneously O most holy trinity I adore thee my God my God I love thee in the most blessed sacrament did those children fully understand who God is did they know all about the blessed trinity no. They adored the mystery. There's the spirit of the faith, which is the spirit of tradition. So radically opposed to the humanistic, man centered spirit of the new mass, the new church. In fighting for tradition, we fight for Our Lady of Fatima. We fight against rationalism and the rationalistic humanistic spirit. Fatima is the answer to naturalism, is the answer to rationalism. Fatima is also the answer to liberalism. What is liberalism? Liberalism is the revolt of human reason against that which is supernatural and divine. And that it's particularly in the moral and the social and the political orders where our human reason wants to do its own thing where we want to be absolutely independent make our own decisions decide for ourselves what to do liberalism is individualism and it's so endemic in our modern way of life on the society we don't even realize it it's 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 the individual who must make up his own decisions individualism which is responsible for all human progress individualism which is the destruction of everything which is firm and constant and stable and unchanging individualism then which is the radical contrary of 
tradition. Liberalism is individualism. Individualism as it destroys all hierarchy, the natural hierarchy, as it destroys the natural order of things, as it produces egalitarianism, that we're all equal. And finally, and it's very strange, that liberalism, which produces individualism, produces as its logical consequence communism. Liberalism produces communism, which is the destruction of liberty. It may seem strange, but it's true, because liberalism, being profoundly individualistic, means that there is no order, no divine rights, so that every individual has his own right, so that society is simply composed of a mass of individuals, a mass of individuals, who must then be ordered according to the greater number, must be ordered in a totalitarian way ultimately, it's communism. Because the only rule is the number. We all know the answer which Fatima has to communism, to therefore liberalism and individualism. Fatima teaches us that we are sinners. Sinners who don't have any rights because a sinner who's offended his Lord and God doesn't have any rights. He can't claim this and that. He cannot always be fighting for his own human rights. No. His life is a life of penance. Of one who knows he's already claimed too much. He's already gone too far. He doesn't need to be claiming his own rights. He needs to be following the rights of God. Fatima, which tells us also that we are not separate individuals, as if we could all exist in our own little world, separate from everybody else, do our own little thing. No. Fatima, which teaches us that we are members of a body, the mystical body of Christ, the communion of the saints, the church. Why is it that the Blessed Virgin Mary is our mother? It's because we are members of Christ, members of He, of he whose mother Our Lady is. Members of the church. Why is it that Our Lady asks us to make reparation, not just for our sins, but for the sins of the entire world and for all sinners? It's because we're either members together of the mystical body, or at least the others can become members of that mystical body of Christ by receiving the graces that our penances can obtain for them. Remember again, how much Our Lady insisted. Would you like to offer yourselves to God? She says to the children, to accept all the sufferings that He may send you in reparation for the sins, for the countless sins by which He is offended, and in supplication for the conversion of sinners. Fatima is radically opposed to the individualism of the modern world. It asks for reparation for others. It shows us it shows us that we must understand that more than individuals on our own, much more instead instead of being individuals on our own, in fact, we are members of Christ, members of his mystical body responsible for the other members, in a certain way. We'll all go to judgment independently, of course. But we will be judged on whether we did the penance and made the sacrifices that we ought to have done for the others. No, we're not in our own little world. We're not in our own little world. Many souls go to hell because there is no one to pray 
and to offer sacrifices for them. That we find destroyed that modern individualistic mentality, that modern individualistic mentality which is behind the whole new church, the whole way everything is done, which is based upon the individual inspiration, the ideas and changeability, which is a radical condemnation of that new liturgical, spiritual and other creations. Moreover, we have, of course, a condemnation of atheistic communism, which is a very strange thing. And the very year in which it appeared in Russia, in fact, even beforehand, is condemned. Condemned by these little children who knew nothing about what it was. It was just the error which Russia will spread. It's condemned. It's condemned. And of course, they announce how it will spread. Fatima, being radically opposed to communism, it is radically opposed to communism because why communism is liberalism. It's the destruction of the rights of God. It's the denial of God. It's a religion set up against God. It's, it's the religion of Satan. It's a satanic religion. That's what Fatima is. The children didn't know it. And that's why that condemnation is such a precious inspiration for us. It's a, it's a condemnation, Fatima. It's a condemnation of the spirit of the revolution already, which is the liberal spirit. And we all know, as Cardinal Ratzinger himself affirmed, that Vatican II is the revolution in the Church. Fatima is the condemnation of liberalism, individualism and communism. Fatima is the tool, the instrument which Our Lady has given us to overcome these errors not only in their most blatant form of communism, but in all of the other watered down, but much more dangerous versions, which we find spread from the east to the west, and right throughout the modern world. Fatima gives us the answer to this most abominable materialism, denial, of that truly supernatural order which is communism. Fatima is the answer, Our Lady is the answer to its most terrible error which is spreading more rapidly, more quickly, with greater devastation than ever before now that the barriers are broken down between the East and the West and the consecration of Russia seems even more unlikely than ever before. From a human perspective, of course, not from a supernatural perspective. Fatima is the answer to naturalism, to rationalism, to liberalism. Fatima is the answer to laicism. Laicism, what do I mean by laicism? Laicism is the relegation of the clergy to the sacristy. As if the clergy has no real importance. As if the church has no importance outside of the religious service. You might say it's strange to say that Our Lady of Fatima is the answer to laicism because Our Lady didn't appear to any clerics, she didn't appear to any priests, she only appeared to three poor lay people, three little children. And the clerics didn't, the priests didn't want anything to do with it at first. It was only when it became so totally and obvious after the fact that it was true that the priests agreed to go along with it. But yet, Fatima is the answer to laicism in that political sphere. 
the idea that a society can be constituted, can exist without God, without the rights of God, without the doctrines and teachings of the church, without any account being taken of religion, without the recognition of the rights of our Lord himself. Fatima is the answer to this era, which is now present in every single society in the modern world, without exception. Of course, we find that in the condemnation, condemnation of Fatima, condemnation of communism. But we find that uh, in a very profound way also, in the story, the history of Portugal, in the years succeeding the apparitions of Fatima, do you know that Our, Lord, Our Lady appeared in 1917 at the time in which Portugal was under the control of a Freemasonic, anti-clerical government, profoundly laicizing in its ideology profoundly, totally opposed to the church. And yet, within nine years, within nine years of the apparition of Our Lady of Fatima, as the devotion of the Portuguese people began to grow, we find that regime totally overturned and thrown out. Completely overturned. And every, all of the Portuguese acknowledge and recognize, recognize there the work of Our Lady of Fatima. They've been trying for over 30 years to get rid of this regime without any success. We find, realized, Our Lady's promise. As she said, if you do what I'm going to tell you, Many souls will be saved and there will be peace. And that's precisely what happened in Portugal after 30 years of continual wars and revolutions and upheavals. In 1928, finally, we find the end of that total anarchy, the beginning of peace, and, and, and an enormous number of vocations, and many souls converting and a very profound Catholic spirit in the country which is going to last for 40 years from 1928 through 1968 we find the most Catholic country in the world is Portugal and under the most Catholic leader in the entire world Salazar extraordinary phenomenon after a century and a half of Masonic domination this country of Portugal becomes so Catholic Profoundly Catholic. All of the Catholics, the governments, acknowledged Fatima. So that from the very time that it had approbation, even beforehand, we find national pilgrimages to Fatima began in 1926, and we find then a great consecration of the Portuguese nation, entire nation on the May, May 13, 1931, which sealed, which sealed then the fidelity of that Portuguese nation, which will prevent Portugal from losing the faith. It's the answer. Fatima was the answer, and still is the answer to the throwing out of our Lord Jesus Christ from the political sphere, from the refusal to recognize the rights of God. Fatima, Fatima is the answer then to naturalism, to rationalism, to liberalism, to laicism, the laicism which has become a doctrine of the new church as an ideal to be worked for, as if it's abnormal that there should be a Catholic country and a Catholic political system because it's against the rights of... the religious rights of man. Fatima is then also the answer to that abominable era of religious indifferentism 
What do I, what do I mean by indifferentism? Indifferentism is the practical consequence of naturalism and liberalism, and uh, it's saying that it doesn't really matter what religion we practice; it's not a big deal, so long as we practice religion, so long as we are sincere with God. That's all that really matters. Indifferentism is the most sensitive index of any of these errors because when these errors begin to start they're underground they're not really apparent but people become indifferent in their spirit they don't have the courage and the conviction to say you must be Catholic you must do what Our Lady and what Our Lord asks you you must not compromise they rather seek to find out if you're sincere or not that's a sign of a very profound disorder in the mind. Disorder that the true religion is treated as if it weren't absolutely obligatory, without any exception. Fatima is the answer to that, because Fatima is our Lady of Fatima, the message of Fatima, is the only answer for the entire world. As a mother, when she appears, teach that which is common to all religions, that, that it's important for us to have a, a religious feeling, or that all religions are good, as has been said at uh, Medjugorje, for example. They not speak about what might offend others? No. Fatima. Our Lady Fatima teaches us that which is most specifically Catholic. And because it's that which is totally Catholic, it's a refutation radical and profound of everything else. The Blessed Trinity, the real presence, body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord. The importance of reparation, of sacrifice, of penance. The Blessed Virgin Mary, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, her Immaculate Conception. The importance of the Church also. Because Our Lady speaks of the Church and the Holy Father who will have so much to suffer until Russia is consecrated. Our Lady of Fatima gives us the answer also to that modern indifferent spirit which is again present in the new liturgy, the new mass framed specifically that can be used by Protestants and Catholics alike which then is totally incompatible with Our Lady Fatima's message with everything she asked for so that regardless of whether any Catholics might feel they're doing the right thing in fulfilling Our Lady's message and going to the new Mass. They're in absolute contradiction with themselves and they cannot do both. They cannot do both because Fatima and tradition, Fatima and the tradition of the true Mass are identical. It's one and the same thing. Fatima, Our Lady of Fatima's message is then the great inspiration that we need to continue our fight for tradition, for church, and for the Mass, and for the sacraments, and for our holy faith, and against all the errors and disorders which come into the church since Vatican II. Fatima is God's advocacy of the rights of Jesus and Mary, of Jesus through Mary, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Fatima is the destruction of all the modern errors and disorders, whatever they might be. Fatima, Our Lady Fatima, is the answer to modernism at the time when modernism was just creeping into the church condemned. Our Lady Fatima gave us the true answer 
the conviction, the source of our conviction, the courage to continue the fight and the battle, knowing that hers will be the victory, that the Immaculate Heart will have the victory, that God's mercy will triumph through Our Lady, through her Immaculate Heart, that these errors will be destroyed by the means of those of us who by the grace of God might be faithful to the message of Fatima. And that's a grace that we need to ask for because it's a supernatural grace and it's something that we cannot pretend to have of our own selves. The grace of being faithful to Fatima and to Our Lady of Fatima and to this message and to everything which is supernatural about it and to the demands of those absolute demands of the faith of Our Lady Fatima, of tradition, of the Church. This must be, and of course it is, it's the spirit of our fight for the faith. It's the spirit of the Church. It's the spirit, therefore, of the Society of St. Pius X. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.